of the Disability Access Advisory Committee to order on April 20th at 11.30 in the morning. And um, let's see, could we do a roll call, make sure who's here? Okay, uh, Myra? Here. Marty? Here. Smith? Uh, Lise Link? Yes, here. Ruth Smith? Here. And uh, no other members yeah. are present. So at the moment, Xander Crowley, Sarah Darren, and, um, oh, come on, my brain isn't functioning. Tori Dixon are not here. And hopefully they will be. Um, but this meeting is to talk about the Emily Dickinson Homestead application for variance for a very large and impressive construction project, re restoration project. And we have architects here. Um, Let's see. We, we have. Who do we have? So, um, bear with me for one second. So we have, oh, Saren is here. Well, let's just Yay. let Saren okay. join. Um, we have Jean Wald, who is uh, on, well, I was gonna say the Historical Commission, but that's that's not of relevance, I don't think. Uh, but sh you are the president of the Amherst, um, uh, of the Emily Dickinson um, Museum and Homestead, is that correct? I'm, I'm the executive director. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, Shante Anderhagen, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Pretty close. Shantia Anderhagen. Shantia. Oh, thank you. I knew it. I had a yeah, it's that. a mouthful. And you are a um, his, uh, historic preservationist. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm consulting um, with the Emily Dickinson Museum on the um, project. Great. Okay, and so um, I guess- Do we I'll expect any of the architects or are they, um, are they planning to be here? They are not able to attend they're today. Not, they're not able to attend. Aha. Uh -huh. hmm. Okay, um, well, you sent us what I think is the most thorough uh, application for anything that I've ever seen. I used to be on committees that looked for, you know, put out RFPs for architects and I've never seen anything this complete, I have to say, it's pretty impressive. Um, so I think, have, has everyone on the committee read the materials that were yes. presented? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay, so do you wanna give us, since we've all read it and it's very long, you don't have to go through all of it, but you are looking for two variances, one for the front door um, front entrance of the Emily Dickinson and one regarding the need or not need for an elevator, right? That's correct, yes. Okay, so is there anything that you want to talk to us about specifically before we have our general conversation about it? Um, I'm uh, here prepared to uh, just hit the high points uh, with uh, in, in uh, verbal description and also um, high point with a PowerPoint, uh, some illustrations, uh, if you would like to see. Okay, that. that would okay. be good. Sure, if that would be helpful to the group, that's fine. Sure, great, then I will um, go ahead and pull this up. Okay, let's see. All right, um, so uh, we're, <clears throat> uh, we're here to, as, as you explained, to um, request variances. Um, uh, we had variances in a previous project approved in 2016, but they are now expiring because of the value of this pending uh, restoration project. Uh, which exceeds 30% of the assessed value of the property. So I'd just like to give you an overview of um, the museum property, um, the project we're bringing to you for your consideration, um, the request for variances, uh, as well as existing and proposed ADA improvements. So, uh, the Emily Dickinson Museum is comprised of two historic houses uh, connected to the Dickinson family, the homestead uh, where Emily Dickinson lived and wrote 
nearly all the poetry we know of, and the Evergreens uh, next door, which was the home of her brother and sister-in-law. The current project is focused at the homestead um, and it has a number of uh, historic designations. Uh, it was uh, determined to be a national historic landmark in 1966, uh, has been listed individually on the National Register of Historic Places since then. Uh, it is a constituent property in the Dickinson National Register District. Um, it uh, is under uh, the requirements of a preservation restriction with the Massachusetts Historical Commission uh, because of uh, various uh, state grants we received for its uh, uh, preservation in the past. Uh, and it is also a part of the, the Dickinson uh, local historic district. Um, the, the project we're um, undertaking uh, is, a, is, is the most substantial project we've ever done at the Emily Dickinson uh, Museum at the Homestead. And it's comprised of a um, couple of elements. Uh, first is mechanicals, the replacement of uh, a heating, ventilation, and cooling system within the main block of the house. Uh, as well as rerouting and upgrading the electrical service uh, entering the homestead property. This portion of the project also includes the installation of a, a new furnace generator and chiller. The generator and chiller will be um, at the north end of its, uh, I apologize for this map, it's difficult to see, but at the north end of a garage, um, on a, on a pad, so it's out of public view, um, and the installation of a transformer um, kind of due east of, uh, of the location of the garage. So at the other, at the other end of the property um, on the boundary with um, 20 Triangle Street. So it's, it's just north of the, the, the lot on which the homestead sits. The outside mechanicals will be enclosed uh, with a seven foot high painted wood fence on the east and west and a nine foot uh, high fencing on the north side. The north elevation of the garage um, becomes the, the uh, south wall of the mechanicals enclosure. So part two of the project is um, partial interior restoration of seven rooms within the interior of the main block of the homestead. That's the, um, uh, the original 1813 portion of the building. Um, and these, all of these areas um, have already been generally interpreted and open to the public. So we are um, wanting to uh, take them from their roughly 20th, mid 20th century appearance uh, back to um, uh, uh, a, a setting and a presentation that uh, Emily Dickinson herself would have been more uh, familiar with. Uh, so the specific spaces are um, uh, the Northwest and Southwest parlors, which run the entire depth of the house. Uh, then the two large stair halls on the first floor and on the second floor, um, a transverse hall between the dining room and the and the parlors. Then uh, a room at the top of the stairs, uh, uh, the Northwest chamber, a, uh, a passage and a closet between that Northwest chamber and Emily Dickinson's room. So that would be returning it to, the con to its configuration in the 19th century. So the um, the interior scope of work includes um, the removal of this 20th century strip flooring to expose the original wood floorboards. And then those original wood floorboards would be um, covered with period style uh, floor coverings. Um, there will be uh, repairs to the interior doors uh, because when the strip flooring was uh, put in, the, the level of the floors was elevated, meaning that the bottom of the doors had to be um, 
had to be uh, reduced in order to clear the, the flooring. There will be uh, the reinstallation of two pocket doors that separate the parlors. Um, on the left, uh, you can see the, the opening between uh, the north parlor and the south parlor. Uh, and in that opening, there used to be two pocket doors that could um, close those two rooms off from each other. Uh, there will be uh, in the center slide, uh, reconstruction of the front entry door and its uh, uh, surrounding uh, masonry. Um, we found, we were able to find the original 19th century door in, in the garage behind the house. Um, and it, it's still in very good condition and we'll be able to uh, put that back in place uh, uh, so, that the, so that that front entry looks as it did in the 19th century. Um, let's see, there'll be uh, a restoration of transom windows in the, in the transverse hall, removal of non-original architectural elements at the main staircase. So the main staircase is here uh, on the right uh, along with the original front door uh, stored in the garage were the original balusters from this staircase. So we will yeah. be able to, um, to, to reconstruct that, that staircase. Um, let's see, and uh, um, some other, uh, other items such as reconstructing the chamber boxes, I, I'm sorry, the fire boxes for in certain rooms, um, uh, where the floor level is going to change. And then to um, reinstall um, a mantle in uh, the bedroom at the top of the stairs, again, an item that um, was found in, in the garage. It's really interesting uh, why and how um, the people who um, occupied the house in the 20th century took those things out and just kept them on site. Um, a bit more of the work is, uh, let's see, re uh, reconstructing a, a staircase that leads from uh, the second floor to the third floor, um, replacing interior storm windows, um, removing the 20th century staircase from the second floor to the third floor, um, and um, installing inst uh, uh, insulation in several areas of the third of the third floor. So that's quite a that's a very long list. Um, so it's quite a bit of work, and we're um, really excited about um, what the ha what the outcome of this project will be. And I wish I I wish I could show you something um, about what that that looks like. But it's um, the the map the the variance requests we're ask, asking for. Um, our, uh, their, their sole intent is um, uh, to ensure that the historic character of the homestead is preserved, whether through maintaining the existing architectural building elements or restoring and reconstructing, reconstructing missing elements, features and finishes to recreate the appearance and function of the building to what Emily Dickinson uh, would recognize uh, it, during her lifetime. Um, so uh, the restoration approach to doing that means not um, introducing some modern elements that would make accessing uh, the entirety of the house uh, uh, easier. There, there are, however, ways that the museum provides a wide experience to the property and its history. But these two, these are the two, uh, the two variances we're requesting section 25 entrances and section 28 elevators. Uh, so what uh, are the, um, the accessibility um, measures that we have in place so far are um, uh, an accessible exterior parking space directly behind the main entrance to the, to the homestead um, and signage for that. Access there's an accessible exterior walkway um, and entry door uh, and door hardware uh, on the east side of, uh, of the homestead rear addition. So that, that goes into the same space um, that all visitors enter. There is um, an accessible um, interior toilet room um, 
there are the the interior doorways are are wide enough for wheelchair access mm -hmm. to the entire first floor. Uh, a water cooler in the public tour center, uh, and uh, a, an additional handrail on the main staircase from the first floor to the second floor that is ADA compliant. So that staircase has two, two handrails. Um, we also have materials for visitors who can't um, ascend to the second floor um, in print, um, in video, on, a, on an iPad, uh, and our our staffing in that area for um, uh, during our regular tour operation, there's always someone on the first floor to um, to, to um, talk about, describe, uh, and interpret the second floor spaces with those who, who remain on the first floor. Um, so we're, we're going to keep all of those improvements in place. Um, and our, our restoration program uh, brings opportunities with it for additional interpretive techniques that, uh, that can serve a variety of visitors. So uh, ultimately we'll be introducing sound, uh, directed sound into the spaces. Um, we'll have some, uh, uh, some projections um, to assist with um, uh, visual interpretation. Um, we expect to have some tactile materials. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the big changes in this restoration is going to be introduction of um, carpets and um, uh, window treatments uh, and all, all kinds of uh, textile uh, materials that give us an opportunity for, um, for tactile um, interpretation. Um, following the restoration, uh, there will be a, 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 a 360 photography of the entire uh, building and every room within the building. So that we'll have um, the ability to have a, a 360 tour of, of the house of all the restored spaces. Uh, for those who aren't uh, able to uh, reach the second floor. Um, in addition, this year, our plans include um, installing an ex a compacted accessible path between the homestead and the evergreens uh, that will uh, facilitate uh, wheelchair and scooter uh, transportation between the two interpreted houses. And then ultimately, um, in, a, in a future phase that's uh, pretty well down the road, six to eight years from now, um, we're intending to reconstruct the, the barn that used to stand behind the homestead, uh, which will be uh, a fully accessible uh, universal access uh, building. Um, so that, that lies in our future. Um, so that's, um, that's uh, our basic program. Um, and that concludes our, our formal uh, presentation. Um, and I guess the last thing I would say at, for now is that we're, we're, um, we're wanting to um, renew, basically renew the variances uh, approved in 2016. And um, this, uh, this access advisory committee um, offered uh, a nice uh, letter to the Massachusetts Architectural Advisory Board um, to support, uh, support the, that request for a variance. So I'd be glad to take questions or, um, uh, or, or respond at any point, however you would like. We have any questions? By the way, did Xander ever get here? No. We don't have Xander. No, no. But okay. uh, um, I believe um, Saren. Uh, I forget who Lord. was the last one who who slipped into the meeting. Is it Saren? Uh, is here. Saren's here. Yes. Yeah. But Tori is not, and Xander is not. Oh, Tori's here. Yep. Oh, Tori I'm is. Here. Great. Yes. Okay. Cool. I I have a question about the garage or the barn, or I forget the thing you're gonna. Uh, build in the next six to eight years yes what what was that again i forget what you said oh 
uh, in the 19th century, a, a large barn stood behind the homestead. And um, our, uh, our, our goal, uh, an important goal for the Emily Dickinson Museum is, is to reconstruct that building uh, so that we can um, remove all of the administrative functions from the homestead and be able to uh, restore the entire house. So in that barn would then become a visitor center, um, have um, exhibits, um, accessible bathrooms, um, and program space. Okay, all right. That's, you answered my question because I, I didn't know if it was gonna be part of the museum or if it was gonna be for administration or, but you answered my question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the virtual tour for upstairs, um, that is, you can only view that if you're in the home like on the first floor or can that be viewed online? Uh, yes, a actually we've just received um, uh, a grant from Mass Humanities to um, develop uh, additional materials that, that would already exist into a virtual tour that can be viewed on, uh, on our website. We have kind of scattered, sort of scattered information now, but uh, this project uh, will really make that a, a coherent uh, virtual experience for anyone. So I've, I've been inside, but I wasn't able to go to the second floor. And I don't think you had, um, this was several years ago. So my sister went upstairs and explained what the upstairs looked like to me. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, I wish you had, I, well, I don't know for sure when that visit was, but um, we do, at this point, we have um, uh, print, uh, printed um, photographs and interpretation of the second floor in a notebook form and also um, in iPad form. So I'm, I'm not sure, I don't remember if that was there then, but this is maybe eight years ago, so. When you say interpretation in um, printed and iPad form, what do you mean? Um, you know, yeah, so that, thank you. The, uh, the term interpretation is uh, the term we use in the Historic House Museum world to um, describe the inf what information a tour guide would convey to visitors. Uh, and that same information uh, is converted into, into text. So it, it, would, uh, it would include information about Emily Dickinson's life, uh, examples of her poetry, um, uh, information about her uh, family and relatives uh, and the different influences and impacts on her as she became uh, a working poet. So when you have it in iPad form, do you, are the people who work there familiar with how to, or did they create the program such that it will read out loud or is it only visual? At this point, it's only visual. Okay. I have a question about if, if there were an elevator to get to the second floor, um, well, I guess the question before that is, when you take people to the second floor, when you will take people to the second floor, will you be letting them go into any of the rooms or will you be letting them only stand in the hall and look through um, either a plexiglass door or you know, stand behind a rope and look at what's in the rooms? They are able to go into the rooms, fully into okay. the rooms. So do you have any sense of how wide those doorways are? Um, let me see if we, have a, have a, um, I'm, I'm looking at the, um, at the application here at the, uh, 
at the plans and let me see. The door, let's see, two, one. The, let's see, one, some doors are 30 inches wide. Another is 32 inches wide. Okay, so the 30 and 32, okay. <laughs> um, and making them wider would not be feasible at, well, I mean, it would be different. It, um, it would, it would be in conflict with our restoration objectives to, okay. to, you know, to have the, to have the house restored as it was in Dickinson's time. Well, right. she didn't know about air conditioning, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, she, it's not exactly the way it was in her time because she would have sweltered in the summer and nobody's going to. And I know you're going to do it because it'll help preserve the materials in the, you know, in the, in the building. I know you're doing it not because it was period air conditioned, but because that's how to maintain, you know, without molding and all that other stuff. So I get the climate control aspect, but she didn't know about air conditioning, <laughs> right? Um, well, I mean, yes, our, you know, for us, I, the objective is, is preservation of the collection. Right. No, yeah. I understand that. And, and preservation of, um, you know, historic fabric uh, mm -hmm. is an important preservation sure. goal. Mm -hmm. No, I understand. I, anybody have any, uh, any other yeah. questions? I have, yeah. I have a question. Okay. Uh, I, I kind of remember vaguely this was being brought up to DAC and we uh, reviewed the plans. And I remember also we talked about an entrance from the Triangle Street. Am I correct? So, um, uh, Sharon, I believe that was not in relation to the homestead and that was in relation to the building the office building, um, uh, which is a separate building that's located on Triangle Street, um, and um, oh. and uh, the Emily Dickinson Museum did provide a walkway from that building, sort of the office building, leading back to the homestead, where there would be an um, an ADA parking spot. And and I'm sure Jane could pull up the site plan to show show that. And then when we looked at the original plans a couple of years ago, there was no elevator being planned, right? No. C correct. And that was yeah. for the homestead. At that time, that yeah. was because um, volunteers or employees would not be going to the second floor. Was there sort of, if, if memory serves me, was there justification at the time? So now plans are being changed. Actually, sorry, that's not for the homestead. That was for the office building. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. So from a few years ago, their variance request um, had nothing to do with the homestead building, and um, oh, I see. had to do with the newly purchased building that that's for their um, office administration. Sort of. I see. Yes. So, so when you said that the DAAC approved variances and you just want to extend them, I'm confused about that in light of what Maureen just said. In, mm -hmm. it, uh, in 2016, we requested variances, these very same variances for the homestead in connection with another project. In 2018, um, it, that involved the Triangle Street house. So what we're what we're asking is uh, is 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 it, it, if we could um, have the same variances that were granted in 2016 for the home when it was a much smaller project, it or was it, it the same project? 
it was a it was a, a different project, it was a different, it was a different project. restoration project at that point. Okay, but now you've exceeded the thirty percent. So actually, what comes into play is very different. No, it was the it's the same circumstance. In twenty sixteen, we exceeded the thirty percent. Oh, you did anyway. Okay, and now we are exceeding the thirty percent. Okay. I'm a little confused because um, you're not planning on putting an elevator, right? Because it would, it would, it would be too expensive. Well, yeah, it would be too expensive, but it would also interfere with the historical. Thing. Yeah, exactly. There. Plan of the yeah. Right. Yeah. There, there's not. So, uh, the goal of fully restoring the homestead means that there's not. Um, a, a logical space for an elevator that could move between levels without um, without requiring a, a stack um, that would disrupt historic fabric and might even um, change the roof line. Right. What about so, the outside one? You wrote about an outside one. Right. But that also would interfere with the historical. Right. Um, yeah, of the outside of the building. That's right. That's why it was. Um, it, that's why we considered it a, um, a a poor option. Is that it would yeah. really yeah. really change the um, change the appearance dramatically of yes. the work house. I believe uh, Marty had a question. I raised your hand. It wasn't really a question, it was more of a statement. To put in an elevator in this house would just be, it would destroy the layout of the house. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it would be very lot. I mean, you'd have to come back to us for a variance, probably for a Lula instead of a, a regular elevator, because to put in a, a code compliant accessible elevator would take a huge footprint out of the house. Um, and it will affect the roof line and trying to put it on the outside there's no place on the outside of the house because if you puncture from the outside of the house into the house you're going to be coming into a room not into the center hallway so it it's just going to really screw up the the layout as far as i can mm -hmm. tell um just for your information i'm an architect um and the other uh, what was the other thing that I was going to say about it? Oh, we you didn't really talk about the front entrance, but the front entrance, as I understand it, is not used except as an emergency exit. Um, so it's not going to change the current pat patterns. So in this case, I really I I would am for um, accepting this. I think this is the best feasible option. And I played around with the program that you have for, for showing what's going on upstairs. And that was really quite interesting, being able to really do a 360. You can look at the ceiling, you can look at the floor. Um, I think that would that's great. And I know you're gonna be putting in period fabrics and things you might wanna think about in part of your display having a touch an area where people can actually touch the fabrics so they won't be tempted to touch the fabrics upstairs yeah yeah i also i also share your opinions too okay. i i'm okay with no elevator because i don't want the the historical building damage in any way but the virtual um, view of upstairs, I think that would be sufficient from my perspective. So I will have no problem with, uh, uh, with going along with this request. And this is Corey, I, I agree. Um, I don't want the historical part of the house um, ruined for an elevator and I think the virtual tour is a wonderful idea. Um, yes. Because when I did, when I visited before, I, I felt, I was disappointed that I couldn't go upstairs, but 
my sister was able to tell me what was there. So, but being able to actually see it on screen would be wonderful. Um, somehow though, could it be audible mm -hmm. for uh, people who cannot see it and um, open captioned for if, if there's any explanation of anything for yes, people who are yeah. Yeah, thank you, yes. Ruth? Whoops. Do you have a, 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 a any any kind of comments? I don't know if Ruth is muted. She is muted. Uh, mu uh, ask, I'll ask to unmute. Yep, Ruth, you should be able to talk. Okay, I, I didn't have a comment at this time. Oh, you don't. Okay, so you don't have, you don't, you don't have anything to say about whether you approve of it or not. Well, yeah, I, I pretty much approve of what they want to do. Okay, Elise. I approve of it as well. I think it's great. Okay, um, so I'm perfectly happy to not, um, I'm perfectly happy to defer to the people who cannot get to the second floor um, because they don't, because they don't want to ruin the historic character of the building. Yeah. And I'm perfectly fine with not putting in the elevator because the people who wouldn't be able to get to the second floor um, say that you've done something that seems sufficient to give them the information that they want. I'm a totally blind person and I have to say my problem with almost all museums and it will continue to be a problem with this one is that first of all, you almost never let blind people touch anything. If you're going to let blind people get into some of the rooms and find out where the bed was and what the dresser felt like, that would be nice. I hope that you're not gonna say, oh no, you may not touch it mm -hmm. because everyone else can see it. So if you're gonna put maybe gloves out, if blind people wanna wear you know, some gloves so they can touch the, the, the furniture to see what, they, what it is actually like, that mm -hmm. would be great. And I, um, I mean, I think it would be really important um, because I've been to lots of museums where they say, oh yes, we have an accessible tour. Don't touch this, don't mm -hmm. touch that, don't touch this. We have a little booklet here and you can look at, you know, we have a, um, a, you know, a facsimile of the wallpaper, see what the pattern feels like. That's one of the patterns. There are five in this place, but that's one of them. And um, I can tell you that it's, um, it's no fun to mm -hmm. go to these places. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I can walk to the second floor is very nice, but I hope that you'll be able to let people who walk in with a guide dog or a cane touch the things. And I understand about body oils and stuff and all that. So maybe you should have a box of gloves mm -hmm. and say, you may touch with gloves. Um, Thank you, Myra. The other thing that I wanna say um, is what Tori said, which is the, that iPad thing. When you go into some museums, you can um, purchase maybe for a dollar or two dollars, this thing, it, it's like a little tiny box and you can, you know, you press number seven and you know, it, and, and you listen through earphones and it tells you all the stuff about it. Mm -hmm. and, it get, and it's pretty descriptive. They, they are not created for blind people, but they're really, really thorough. And it sounds like that's what you put into the iPad, but what you put into the iPad so far has no audible access. Um, so if you could get somebody to figure out mm -hmm. how to get that either through a remote device or through the iPad itself to have audible access, that would be a long way toward full accessibility. Okay. Um, so those would be the two things that I would hope that you would do. I have no problem with the front entrance at all. You have, you know, you, you don't even have a second class entrance. You have a, the regular entrance that everybody uses is accessible and I applaud you for this. And I think this is a great thing for the town and it's a great thing um, that that you're all doing. Is any of this money coming from Amherst College or is it all privately raised? It's private money. Really? Yes. So they haven't put oh. anything into it. Wow. That's pretty That's impressive. Wow. That's yes. a lot of money. And I, I figured that Amherst College was footing some of the bill, but they're not. No, no, it's a private gift. Yeah, didn't you receive a uh, donation from someone's 
tr um, life that state. That, that's correct. It was a bequest that was um, had to be put in. Well, had to be put into an endowment, and the distribution uh, of income from that endowment fund is restricted to use for buildings, grounds, and collections. So this this particular project is. Um, uh, perfect, <laughs> perfect for those restrictions. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So nice. does someone want to make a motion about these variances? But I just want to clarify. Oh, so sure. if the if the iPad uh, tour for the upstairs is going to be audible, then it needs some kind of captioning. And it's usually referred to as open captioning. Okay. For for people who are deaf or hard of hearing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Is the iPad thing the same thing that's available in the text book? Or is it different? Uh, it, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. But the um, what is to be further developed is the virtual tour on the website. So that that will actually be more complete. It'll be a fuller, more complete uh, tour for the website that we can then um, we can we can place on the iPad. Okay, as long as that website tour uh, is accessible and it talks. Okay. I mean, there are ways to make computers talk. You might do it through recording that comes up when the picture changes. I don't know how you want to do it, but if there's text on the screen, the text has to work through text to speech. So yeah. um, with those changes, I mean, you're looking for variances. Um, there's some, well, I, I would say that the things that I, that Tori and I brought up are not in your variance request. Um, and I hope that that means that you will do them because that's part of access as mm -hmm. well. And I don't know how to write it in that you should also make the iPad um, presentation and the website presentation uh, accessible through auditory and caption. Can we put sure. that in? Uh, yeah, so, you, so the DAAC is providing recommendations to the MAAB and I believe okay. Jane is going through the AAB public hearing process next week. So th these recommendations will be provided to them and it will be up to the AAB to, you know, they'll, they'll consider your recommendations as part of their approval process. I think Elise has, uh, has raised, oh, raised her hand. Elise, go, yeah. Yeah, um, well, one thing is I do wanna, um, I think uh, Marty brought up a really great point, not Marty, um, Oh God, I'm going blank, a brain fart. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, yes, the touch thing upstairs is with the gloves is very important to me as well. But um, mm -hmm. when I know there are people who have hearing loss that don't do well for background noise. And I was wondering where the iPad would be located um, for looking at those and listening to those virtual tours. Would there be a lot of like coming and going and background sound that they have to deal with. I don't know if this makes sense, but I, I think headphones are a good idea. Yes, I understand uh, your question. Um, it's, yeah. it's available in the um, first floor front hall. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. There is um, occasional movement between um, a hallway that leads uh, from one side of the house into the parlors on the other side of the house. So that goes through that large front hall. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's usually the only, um, the only intrusive noise. Okay. Um, yeah. So the question uh, might be, would something like, I don't know, disposable headphones with that I mean is can, can you suggest a, um, a solution I'm not hard of hearing I just um, but I you know I'm just thinking of others that are 
and mm -hmm. um, and I do also have a thing with about background noise myself. Um, I maybe headphones can can focus you more, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I know that headphones could be expensive, mm -hmm. um, but that could be an option. I don't don't know what to suggest. I just you know I'm just thinking that that isn't might be an issue. Okay. Well, maybe you could have people, um, they could go up to the, if you made it apparent that people could borrow or rent, you know, put a deposit down on a headphone. And now that everybody's cleaning everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, maybe yeah. you can just, you know, you can have three or four headphones and clean them, um, yeah. you know, when people return them, you know, disinfect them and people do that now. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's a really good idea. So yeah. does someone want to make a motion that incorporates um, the things that we've said? And let me just comment. I think that cleaning head headsets in between would be much better than having disposable um, he, uh, headsets or whatever you were referring to. Right. Um, yeah, and that can be done easily with Clorox wipes. Yeah. You want better quality sound, you know, mm -hmm. if you're going to have headsets, you don't want crummy ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's so many cleaning products out now. I mean, you yeah. can just alcohol them. You can do whatever, you know. That's the, what I do mine. Yeah. 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 So does someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. Go Second. for it. Second. Well, you got to make the motion. <laughs> we, <laughs> that we approve this with the um, with the recommendations that we have mentioned. Do I need to mention them all again? I think Maureen has to know what to write down. So so far, I have um, you know uh, the the DAAC is fine with the variance requests as submitted um, and you recommend that the applicant provide audible and open caption interpretation devices uh, both for the for the website and uh, on site and um, and for the on site accommodations they should uh, provide headphones um, be offered uh, and, um, and have, uh, allow, uh, blind people or persons with, uh, low vision be able to touch fabrics on the first floor. Um, oh, on any floor. Or, I or, mean, yeah, oh, wherever true, on is. any floor. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 No, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. on, on, um, yeah. On any, th throughout the, f uh, in building. How about that? And, um, if I may, um, Perhaps, um, you know, on the website, there should be, um, I don't know if the word is disclaimer or not, but a, um, a, a, um, a note saying those who need uh, accommodations, you know, please call this number, or email mm -hmm. us so you can, because um, some of this uh, I've often seen, especially in museums, is that there are some museums that have state of the art accessibility accommodations, but no one knows about them, including employees, mm -hmm. and that they just sit mm -hmm. in closets for years mm -hmm. and um, visitors and employees don't know about them. So to um, educate the employees and to, um, you know, where it makes sense to make it known on the website, at the front door, or whatever, at the where people buy their ticket or what have mm -hmm. you that to make it apparent and maybe even your voice message for the the homestead about um, providing accommodations okay thank you yeah that's good and i i really want to make it clear that i i understand that a lot of touching can really destroy things over time so i'm very aware of that but i really i think there are ways for you to make it possible for people to touch things and not ruin them Mm -hmm. and gloves I don't know if they have those cheap cotton gloves or if they have those you know to use just like the ones that everybody's using now you know I don't I don't know if that would damage furniture I don't know but I would hope that you would have a way for people to touch things instead of saying oh no don't touch that don't touch that we have a little book here <laughs> no I think the the gloves are easily uh acquired and uh are, are you know inexpensive easy to use and I think that's a good 
that, that's a good uh, suggestion, a good accommodation. Okay. All right. So do you have something you can read, Maureen, or should we just trust that we're, you're going to put it in a readable form with all the stuff that you very nicely took down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think, yeah, those items, uh, you know, that I just said, um, audible and open, open ca caption interpretation uh, be provided for both the website and for on site. Um, and that, you know, for the, and then in addition for on site, there'd be headphones offered that uh, for the interpretation and um, those with visual impairments be allowed to touch fabrics in the building and be provided gloves and and to, um, you know, to pr provide a notification to the public uh, about these accessibility uh, accommodations. Cool, I would change fabrics to features, but other than that, that I, that's great, thank you. That's very thorough. Okay, we have a second from Lise, right? Yes, second. Okay, all right, are we gonna roll call this? Um, well, sure. I'll roll call it Elise. Here, yes. Theron? Yes. Ruth? Yes. Tori? Yes. Um, and uh, Marty? Yes. And I'll vote yes. So that's cool. Thank you. you this is great. You have. Thank um, you. Do you know when this is going to be completed? Do you have a timetable? I forget. It, we're aiming to reopen. Um, next spring so it'll take about a year okay yeah so you that. think you think maybe like in, by memorial day ish or oh or i uh uh we're hoping for march in oh. 2022 okay that's uh, cool I, that's so, great. It, so the museum will not be open at all during that, renovations that's correct yeah it's a pretty uh pretty extensive project and it's going to be a big mess for a while. Mm -hmm. has, oh, this is great. Um, has it been closed during the pandemic? Yes, it has. Yeah, we've been closed since last March 15th. Just like everything else. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, I want to thank you all for uh, for hearing our our request and for this uh, what's been a really helpful discussion for us uh, in planning to move forward and we have uh, so your suggestions are very helpful and we have um, this next year to <laughs> to continue to work them into our uh, uh, into our tours and our um, uh, experiences for visitors well, you can always come back to us about the accessibility issues for the website and stuff because we could let you know. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, that would be really good if you would come back next spring and say, this is where we are, this is what we've done, mm -hmm. and what do we need to continue to do? Does it work? Because right. sometimes sometimes um, the people are told that they work and then the people who have to use them find out that they don't. Right, yes. Okay, thank you. Great, so Welcome thank back. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And that was all that was on the yeah. agenda for today. So yeah. uh, I, I'll let Myra, yeah. So are, are you guys uh, agreeable to adjourn? Yes. Maureen, to adjourn. I, I, Maureen, I have a question. Sure. <laughs> and uh, I can never log in through my laptop to our uh, Zoom meetings. I can only do, I try to do it with my uh, laptop for, for quite a while and I gave up and I can only do it on my iPhone. So is there something that I am missing or? Um, you know, you might, it might be helpful if you download the Zoom app to your computer, to your laptop. Um, so you are able to um, theoretically, uh, sometimes uh, people have expressed that they have issues using Zoom on their personal computer or laptop um, using the browser, but um, I can provide you a link to download the Zoom app and that might help your situation. I I'm not really sure what the specific situation is for you, but wanna try that and see what happens. I would, I really would, but 
I think our meetings are the only ones I cannot zoom in. You know, oh. I'm a member of Zanta Club. We always do webinars and I have no problem whatsoever. So it's just with this thing. Yeah, I don't, oh, I don't know. know. That's interesting. That's good to know. Um, well, let's try that. Let's, uh, okay. I'll send you a link um, to okay. Zoom and it will let you download it to your laptop and okay. we'll see if that works. If that doesn't work, maybe I could ask one of someone from our IT department to okay. help All troubleshoot right. you. Okay. All right. All right. Very All right. Thank you so much. Do we need a motion to adjourn? Uh, I don't think so. But no. Okay. No. And we're not. We're just adjourned. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you All next right. time. Bye. 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 Bye.